Hello and welcome back. In this video, you're going to learn how to design a cantilever beam using ACI 318. So whether you're a student who want to learn more or a fellow engineer who is practically designing beams and other types of structures, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to show you a calculator that I have developed in Microsoft Excel and will help you to design a cantilever beam within the matter of seconds. If you were interested in having the file, please comment your email below this video and I'll be more than glad to share the file with you. As you can see, the example in here says that design a 4 meter long cantilever beam that supports a dead load of 5 kN per meter and a live load of 7 kN per meter. The concrete compressor strength is given to be 28 megapascals and the yield strength of steel is 420 megapascals. The main bar is to be of 16 mm diameter and the stirrup diameter to be 10 mm. So as you can see in here, we have the yellowish cells which represent that we need to enter the manual values into here. The other cells will be calculated automatically. So before everything else, we need to define our materials like we do for any structural element or structure we are designing. Then we have the loading and then we have the dimensions. Once we have all of these, then we have the load calculations. In here, we will have the ultimate load and besides that we will have the ultimate moment being calculated. And then when we scroll to the right here, the initial steel area will be calculated and then it will be checked the compression block to make sure that our section is tension controlled. And if that is okay, we will jump to the next step where we will have the area of the bars and the number of the main bars required. And last but not least is to have the shear force exerted on this element or the cantilever beam and then we will have area of the shear bars or the stirrups. Once we have all this information, we will be able to see the spacing between the stirrups. So let's enter the values in here. So first of all, we have the compressive strength of concrete to be 28 megapascals and then the yield strength of steel was 420 megapascals. And then we had the dead load to be 5 kN per meter and the live load to be 7 kN per meter. On top of that, the span of this cantilever beam was 4 meters and we had the diameter of the bar to be 16 millimeters. The clear cover for this example will be 40 millimeters. And then last but not least, we have the uh, stirrup diameter, which was given to be 10 millimeters. So once we enter the manual values into the yellow cells, we will be able to see the results in the white cells. So for example, the height of the beam is calculated to be 500 millimeters. So basically we know that from the ACI 318 table 9.5a, the height of a cantilever beam is to be taken as span divided by eight. So once we have that, for the effective depth, half of the diameter of the main bore and the clear cover are deducted. So for the beam width, what we have is that the beam height should be from one and a half times to two times of the beam's width. So based on that, we have taken 1.5 in here in order to be on the safe side. And the beam width is given to be 301 millimeters. And based on this information, the self weight of concrete is calculated in here. So basically it is the weight times height multiplied by the unit weight of concrete, which is 25 kilonewton per cubic meters. And once all of that is calculated, we have the ultimate load to be 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. Based on that, we have calculated the moment, which is ultimate load times span square divided by two. Then if we scroll to the right in here, the initial area for the steel is calculated. So in order to calculate the steel area, we need to know the height of the compression block. In this case yet, we don't know the height of the compression block, so we will estimate the amount of steel area required based on this formula. Once this is done, we will reevaluate the area of the steel we just obtained into the formula for compression block. And then we will divide the compression block by the depth of the beam. If that value is smaller or equal to 0.3, this will mean that the section is tension controlled. As you can see, it's shown to be in green here. 
If this value was greater than 0 0.3, it would have been indicated in red. So once everything is calculated now, we want to know how many bars we will need in the cross section of our cantilever beam. For that purpose, we have calculated the area of a single 16 millimeter bar to be 201 millimeters square. And once we divide this value or the steel area by this, we will need five bars in our section. And last but not least is to estimate the spacing between the 10 millimeter stirrups that we are going to need. First of all, we are going to calculate the ultimate shear, which is basically the load times the length of the beam for a cantilever beam. And that's calculated to be 87 kilonewtons. Once we have that, we will calculate the sectional area of the stirrups. In this case, the AV will be two times the cross-sectional area of the 10 millimeter bar that we are going to use for a stirrup. The reason is that our stirrups in this case will be two legged. And once we have that, using this formula, we'll calculate the spacing required between the stirrups. So basically this is how this calculator can simplify things for you when designing a cantilever beam. If you found the information in this video helpful, and also if you think that we have missed anything and want to add that in our next videos, please let us know in the comments below. Also, if you want to have access to this calculator, comment your email in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.